Hi, I'm Rick Dior. Today's lesson will consist of advanced jazz brush technique. We're going to start out with a little demo of a Charlie Parker tune called Billy's Bounce. I'll play two courses up front, followed by two solo courses, and then a course of double time. And then I'll take the head out. One, two, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. So that was Billy's Bounce, 12 Bar Blues, and normally when I practice brushes I'll sing a tune in my head or I'll play with the radio or a CD or whatever and just play along to different time feels in the jazz idiom. So we might have a fast up-tempo swing. And it's great to play with recording. It gives you a little inspiration to keep that going. Or we might have a ballad. So whatever it may be, playing along with music is, is the definite suggested method of practice. Now you see this practice pad here. I'm using this today so I don't have to shout over the playing when I'm talking and playing at the same time. These are great to practice on if you don't have anything handy. A cardboard box works um, really well. Anything that has a little bit of contact noise to it works great. The brushes I use are just regular wire brushes, normal weight, nothing um, fancy, nothing extravagant. Vic Firth, Regal Tip, a lot, of, a lot of companies make really fine brushes for this. I do not like the heavy gauge wire brushes. To me they're just a little unruly when I, when I try to play fast. So the first technique we're going to talk about is the tap. Now the tap is done with either hand, but we're going to work on it today with the right hand first. And it's mostly a finger motion, which looks like this. Now the object of the tap is to get as much of a staccato or piercing, let's call it, sound as possible. So a sharp kind of piercing sound, not this. That's kind of a flat dead stroke, okay? We want this. So it'll cut through the music. Now that does take a certain amount of technique and these are different than sticks. When you play fast, they don't really bounce as much. You're gonna need to help it along with your fingers. So that's the tap, and you can do that also with your left hand. The four-stroke rough is a very common little rudiment that drummers use with brushes. And again, that's staccato. You see on my left hand, I'm playing traditional. You can play match grip if you want. That's fine. But I'm, I'm a traditional player, so that's what I'm going to do in this video. And you'll see I use a lot of wrist. If you play this way, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's just a different sound. But it's a thicker sound, and it doesn't really, like I said, cut through a whole big band or, or you know, at higher volumes, your jazz group, you want that tap sound. The next thing we're going to talk about is the accompanying hand, which in this case is the left hand, and we'll talk about the sweep. Now, most of you who are um, accomplished players know that the sweep will normally move in a pulsating motion. It can either move clockwise or counterclockwise. Great drummers like Elvin Jones and Peter Erskine uh, use this technique counterclockwise quite quite often and quite effectively. So that's another way to play. Uh, today we'll just talk about playing clockwise. So as you see when I'm moving this in a circle, 
as you're playing slower, it's a bigger circle. And I'm pulsing. In other words, the same beat is always on my right hand side. So one, two, three, four. And as I play faster, I play a smaller circle or an oval, if you'd like. And you see now my fingers are getting in on the action on the left hand. And finally, when I play really fast, that is almost a straight line up and down. Now one um, common, let's call it a myth, that, that drummers learn is to play from bottom to top, young drummers that is. I believe that's wrong. What you want to do is play from side to side, like that. It's much more ergonomic. It takes advantage of the, the arms moving this way rather than unnaturally that way, which takes a lot more work. This is easier than that, okay? So more of a sideways motion. Now again, as you get faster, playing that basic jazz beat, you'll see the left hand compresses into a small circle. Well, you're not crossing over anymore as here. I'll do it once again for you. And we get faster and faster, and you see that left hand go into its own territory and the right hand into its own territory. And you'll see a little movement from left to right with that right hand. So that gives a little bit of a relief to my arm muscles as I get tired playing this for maybe 10 minutes at a time behind all those soloists. Okay? Now that's sort of a just a regular jazz pattern. Everybody's heard it before. There's these little embellishments right here, and those are called sweeps, short sweeps. And then there's another one, which is that, and that's called a pop. Now a pop is a very important uh, brush rudiment because it's your sort of rim shot. So you're sort of trapping the wire and the end of the brush, which is here, before it goes to the wire, in kind of a, a, a conga slap or rim shot motion. So it should be a, a, a very thick sound, but not this. You hear the difference? That's just a dead stroke. That is what you want. So there's a lot of high pitch um, sound in there. And the left hand tougher with the left hand. You have to do kind of a clinch here. A good exercise just to do simple rhythms. Takes a lot of um, wrist motion. Not this. You hear the difference. That. So those are your big strokes. If, <clears throat> excuse me. If you want to catch patterns that the band's playing or figures, Okay, so those are your, your different sounds. Now we also have the staccato sweep, which works with the left hand. And that's just moving your wrist back and forth. You can do rudiments with that. Double stroke rolls, power rhythms. Drags, roughs, whatever. Very effective. So that also works great with Brazilian uh, playing, samba and bossa nova, which we'll do a different video on that. So that's the technique. Start out slow and make sure that you're using the tip of the brush and moving towards and towards you. So away from you, which would be forward and backwards. Like that. Okay. And you just work that into your play. The other popular uh, rudiment is the flutter, and that's done like this. So again, you're taking the, the end of the brush right before it hits the wire and hitting on the rim and then bending your hand down. You can augment that with little um, drags on your left hand or just do both. On a snare drum, you wouldn't get this um, kind of rim sound. On the pad, you get mostly rim. very effective um, spice it up. Uh, now you saw in the um, first demo uh, the uh, double time and you can play double time lots of different ways. Uh, 
the best way, if it's not too fast, is to just try to make the tempo, which is, and that, we did that earlier. So your hand just moves very quickly and it's tiring. The other thing you could do is just, just drop it like that. And that's easy, but it's, it's kind of not a real, you know, staccato sound. It's not a tap anymore. It's just kind of a throwing sound. Um, another way to do it is, um, is to just use the flutter like this. So my left hand is moving in more of a halftime motion, circular motion. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then also uh, you saw me on the um, opening demonstration do this. Now that's old Philly Joe Jones um, motion that he used quite often. And several drummers use that. So you're going scrape forward, scrape or sweep backwards, forwards, backwards. And then you're just filling in two notes. Now that's difficult to do uh, when you're doing that with the hi-hat on the kit. You might want to practice coordination exercises playing this because there's so much motion going on. It makes it difficult to uh, play coordinated stuff over with your bass drum and your hi-hat. You definitely need to practice that. But that's the motion. You can break it up like I did on the on the demo. Uh, and finally, let's talk about ballads. Gives a lot of drummers trouble, mainly because of the tempo. If you're doing a really slow song, like one, two, three, four. So very slow. What you want to do is think double time, but play half time. So one, two, three, four. And that eighth note in between will help you keep a good tempo so there's not guessing as to where the beat is. Now for faster ballads, like a walking ballad, you can do this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and then also there's the figure eight. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So whatever tempo, you know, you adjust your stroke. One, two. We really want to hear that white noise sound of the accompanying hand. And then one, and two, and three, and four. And the motion should look pretty, should be very relaxed, stirring the soup, in other words. And you see how my wrists are moving, very relaxed. Sometimes you just you don't even want to use your hi-hat. Just use the, the head and use your accents to play the time. Now, the, the last thing um, I, I do want to talk about is playing on the head. In other words, everything's on the head. Rather than one accompanying hand and one hand playing time, you play everything on the head. So when, and again, I demonstrated this earlier in the demo, but when you're playing just the basic jazz brush pattern, which is this, there's a way to do it on the head, which is. So everything is just scraping. And a great way to practice that is just do some rudiments, maybe parietals, rhythms. so on. Uh, and then there's also uh, a number of tricks. There's the trill, which I did a little of that, I think, in the opening. There's the rim roll. There's the bird of prey. There's shaking the brush in the air. There's tons of, tons of things that you can do. Uh, we'll close out. I'll just play a little improv, and then thanks, and we'll see you next time.